Hello. Hi. Hello. Thanks for that reading. It was great. Oh, glad you enjoyed it. Thank you. It makes you want to get up and go, you know. <laughs> Good. Well, that's what I'm. That that's what what I'm trying to, yeah, instill. Mm. Well, thanks for coming, Farah. Um, so, Farah, yeah, we're gonna just dig in, and I'm gonna let you introduce yourself, actually, because what I wanted um, to start with is maybe if you can tell us a bit about your background and what, how you, well, maybe first say sure. what you do to begin with, but uh, sure. then take I'm... take us through the backstory. Uh, thanks, first of all, for inviting me. Um, I'm Farah from Let's Talk Languages. Um, I teach English, French and Spanish as a second language. Um, my background is a bit all over the place. It's very mixed. <laughs> um, I am Belgian, a Belgian national. Uh, and actually, this is how we met, uh, Annelie. It was over your Brexit email. <laughs> I replied to it like, rah, 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 rah. <laughs> what am I going to do now? Um, because at, in my core, I feel more British than I do Belgian because I haven't been there for like 20 years. Um, but um, uh, yeah, so what was I saying? I always interrupt myself. Um, <laughs> I'm from <laughs> Belgium, but I've been in the UK since uh, 1997. Um, and um, I started teaching uh, by accident, really. Um, <laughs> when I went back to Belgium in 2013, I was teaching some children English. It was just like helping them and, you know, creating games and things like that. Um, and then when I moved back to the UK, I was really, um, I really missed that. And the, the parents actually asked me, could you carry on the lessons? Because they really enjoyed it with you. It was really engaging, blah, blah, blah. And I said, yeah, sure, but I don't know, I don't know how. And she said, well, how about we try Skype? So it was completely by accident. And I was like, Skype? And I was like, okay, <laughs> yeah. And so it like, was actually them that kind of not forced you, but yeah. suggested you and made you take Absolutely. that leap. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I didn't know where to begin because a lot of my teaching was like games, board games, like physical things, cards, competitions, because it was it was a group of boys, they were brothers and they were very competitive. Um, we had to break them up very often. Um, <laughs> but um, So I was like, I don't know how I'm going to play games on Skype. So actually, I, I've been a very uh, avid screen sharer, presentation creator, games creator <laughs> since 2014. Um, and uh, that's been uh, a lot of fun. And we said, we'll just try it for a year and see if they like it. And then and they do. And today I, I had my first lesson um, back with uh, one of the younger kids um, uh, of the three of the three boys. So yeah, it's uh, it's still ongoing. And I just thought, OK, well, maybe I'll teach more people, which was an idea, but then it happened because her friend had heard of me and then her neighbor and then her cousin and then, you know, and, and, and word of mouth. So that kind of happened. And it took me a few years to realize that I actually had a business. Um, mm. <laughs> so it I wasn't started. you, you didn't set out with this no. kind of like, I'm going to start a business. No, it just sort not. of came to you more. Yeah. I think I would have, um, I don't know, run away from the idea of I'm going to start a business. Hmm, where shall I begin? Uh, <laughs> I think I would have been too overwhelmed. It kind of happened organically with, you know, many like hiccups and mistakes along the way and lots of learning and things. It was never perfect, um, but it's uh, it's developed a lot into into Let's Talk Languages now. And when I'm curious to when did you realize that you had a business? Like what made you when was it where? Or, or was it like this is going pretty well maybe I should put more effort in here or was it like oh my gosh I have so much like you know because I guess a lot of that kind of side gigging and doing mm -hmm. a few things and then maybe you have some income from somewhere else and that kind of when do you make that switch yeah um it's a very good question um I'm I'm also a conference interpreter so at one point I tried to stop teaching so that I could just interpret full time. Um, and I had this job in uh, Somaliland, which is my other um, other mixed identity. Uh, so I went out there for um, just under a year. And 
people still kept messaging me. Hi, I want lessons. Hi, I heard about you. Hi, hi, hi. And I was like, leave me alone. <laughs> I'm trying to break up with you. And I never really could. So um, I did a bit of teaching when I was still out there online. Um, and um, when I came back, I would just had more requests, more, more things from like, you know, word of mouth. So I was like, okay, well, I enjoy this. I like what I'm doing. Uh, and even people who had had a break for a year because I had gone uh, to work elsewhere, they still wanted to have lessons again. So I thought, okay, well, you know, maybe I should continue. <laughs> and then when I started again and I, and I looked at my calendar, I could see that the majority of it was just teaching. And I was like, well, you know, maybe you should develop this a bit more and give it some more, some more time, some more thought, because I just, I didn't really think of it as a business. I just thought of it as, you know, connecting with people and understanding, you know, their journey and why they're learning languages. And, you know, it, it was not just children, it was also adults. It was just um, completely, completely random. Like what came to me it was never, I'm going to look for this. or I'm going to look for that. Because any time that I did do that, it never really, it never happened. It never worked. Mm. I couldn't impose something, you know, on nature. It had to happen um, mm. organically. So, yeah. And what's the situation now? Like, where are you at now? Because you've got a lovely website. Thank you. <laughs> I um, the, the website is as a result of your book <laughs> when I read it. Because I was like, oh my gosh, that line in the book where, where you say... Um, Am I allowed to quote the book? Yeah, because it's published. Yes, of course you <laughs> um, are. Thank the, you. the line where you say, um, you know, just do it, go for it. It's not like you're walking down um, the red carpet with all the paparazzi, you know, no one is going to click on it for weeks. No one's going to visit your website for the longest time. That's what made me do it because I had it all ready and, you know, and then I was like, no, nah, I'm not going to bother. I don't want a website. What is this? How pretentious? How this? How that? You know, all the mindset issues. Um, so anyway, I, I published it and um, and uh, published it, the website, not, not a book. Um, and uh, it's going really well. And actually, during COVID, I, I was I had so many requests um, it, that's that the fullest time I have ever been. Um, and then I had to start really being very strict with things like, you know, coming late or late payments or, you know, like I just flipped everything and I did, I followed your online payment template thing <laughs> so that, you know, if there's no payment, there's no class, <laughs> you know, if it doesn't come up in my calendar, I'm not turning up, <laughs> I'm not teaching, you know, like I, you know, it was, uh, I had to be very strict because I had so many people and I didn't have that flexibility that I had before where someone would say, look, something's come up. I need to cancel. Can we reschedule? Can we this? And you're like, yeah, sure. Tomorrow, you know, and then you've, you've lost that hour, like, fine, you can do something else like marketing or whatever, but you know, all that energy that you kind of, um, you know, you, you work yourself up to, to be able to teach, especially if it's children, um, and, and that's then just gone and, you know, you're left in this slump and then, okay, let's, let's do something productive. And, you know, you get into that, that kind of mentality. So, um, yeah, now it's a lot more, um, I don't want to say professional or formal because well, you've <laughs> implemented some strategies, haven't you? Yeah. Kind of, or some systems put, put, started to put a few systems in place, I guess. Exactly. And it's working, it's working quite nicely. I'm experimenting with more things like um, uh, group sessions. We've got a, interestingly, nobody wanted to do it for French, but I had loads of requests for Spanish, um, Spanish club, where it's basically a conversation um, class with um, lots of different levels of Spanish and it's, it's working really well. Um, and that's something that I'm marketing like through my website and through my Instagram page. Um, and essentially, it's just we, we meet up, we talk about a topic um, and there's different things that we do. So um, each week there's something different, like one week is a sort of book club and the next week is we have a guest speaker from, you know, each time it's somewhere different in the Spanish speaking world. And then another week it's games and another week it's, do you know what I mean? Something like that. So the like the website has uh, helped me think more outside the box and not just teaching one to one, but doing other things. Mm. Um, so that's been that's been uh, a big learning journey <laughs> for me. Mm. I bet, I bet. And speaking of like big learning journeys and 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 kind of things that you I guess enjoy with with having your own business now that you 
sort of made the shift properly, shall we say. Uh, what are um, some of the most rewarding things for you in terms of having your own business, if you compared to before? Um, I think um, having everything in like on my terms is really, really nice. <laughs> Um, you know, I work for myself. I don't work for anybody else. I don't have to listen to somebody else. There are challenges that come with working for yourself. Um, but um, it's just so nice to be able to organize my time so that I can use my time for things like what you were saying, like spending more time with friends or family um, or, or learning more languages. I'm, I'm learning German and um, upsettingly i've been <laughs> invited to do a um a podcast series in german to prove a point to my students that you should make yourself vulnerable and just throw yourself out <laughs> um i wish it had been anyone else you know hi I've, i'm a french teacher i've got a podcast do you want to do a podcast with me or hi i'm a spanish or english or whatever but no it had to be the one language that i don't actually speak um but i said yes you know because why not no. um and um yeah i think things like that being able to have organize your time so that you can you know manage your um your energy levels and just do other things um that that you want like have some free time and not be a slave to your work um which at the beginning it kind of does feel a bit like that because there's so many things to set up uh, yeah. you, know, you have to learn all the tech stuff and all the admin and all the finance and all the marketing and oh my gosh and all of that and you know constantly having to keep up with the new tech trends or language mm. apps and websites and and whatever else so that's um would you yeah. say that's been some of the more challenging experiences throughout the journey or yeah, definitely. Um, just the whole, uh, the, it's the, I mean, it's fine because I have an accountant, <laughs> so I just send him everything. Um, but learning the all the other parts, because um, I never did business studies, I, I never did a course in business or anything Neither like that. Neither did I. Um, right? <laughs> so there's a lot of learning. Um, that went into that and I went I joined lots of different business huddles and groups and things like that so that I could learn from other people who were in that field um you know learn from other people's mistakes or from my own mistakes um and try to read up on you know best practices and things I think that's been difficult and also burnout like doing mm -hmm. so much because you don't have a nine to five so there's a temptation like oh okay well I've got a free you know, morning or a free afternoon or a free this or free, and you just keep working, 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 yes. working, and then you never actually have time to to stop working. And then you go out and meet people and you talk about what you did in your day. And then it's just always work, work, work. Um, and even if you love work, it, it should you should still have some downtime. <laughs> so I think burnout is um, is something that is also very real because there's so many different things that you don't feel like you're working all the time on the same thing. Because when you're doing admin, it's different to when you're creating, you know, classes or games or whatever. And that's different to when you're doing your spreadsheets and different to when you're recording something like everything feels different. And you don't realize, actually, I am working and I need to put in, you know, have some boundaries with myself mm. um, so that I can be healthy, <laughs> yeah. not just for work, but, you know, just for life in general. So, yeah, absolutely. Gosh, that is so important. And I think like you said earlier as well. I think is a particular challenge in the beginning when you're just 100%. setting up or when you're just beginning to you know when when you're when you haven't got all those systems in place and you're you're still figuring out what to do there's such a yeah there's such a temptation to just d do too much yeah because you need the money let's be honest yeah, like yeah. you need the income so you you you're going to need to exactly and if you say no to one person like you don't know when the next offer is gonna come like if you're like no i just i can't i'm so busy this month i've done this or i'm doing that like it's and you be, and then afterwards you're like why did i say no i shouldn't have said no i should have said yes and then you start saying yes to everyone and then you're fully booked and then three months down the line you have total burnout and you're like why did i book every single hour <laughs> with a one hour lunch break as if it's like a nine to five 
Like yeah. some people say, oh yeah, just give yourself a nine to five schedule, give yourself a lunch break. And it's like, no, but it doesn't work like that. Like, <laughs> because it's, it's too, like doing back to back classes. I don't know about the rest of you, but I find that very exhausting. I can maybe do a couple of back to backs um, and then a break and then maybe another couple, maybe out of push. But before, during COVID, oh my God, I was back to back Monday to Friday, you know, with a tiny break here and there. And it, hmm. it was not good. I mean, I, I managed because we couldn't go out, we couldn't do anything. And in a way it was kind of my survival technique. Like I'm gonna spend time online and distract myself from the problems of the world. <laughs> um, so, you know, there was that. But now, like, especially the, like with the new term in September, I am, I'm really enjoying teaching then a break and teaching then a break mm -hmm. and it's been uh, it's been really nice mm. oh wonderful yeah that balance is so important gosh um um okay i know you need to go soon so i'm gonna just ask you one more question and this is um just thinking about if if you could give a couple or two three tips to language teachers who are maybe thinking of setting up their own business online, what would that be? Um, a calendar, keep a calendar. It's gonna sound so simple. Um, I had a calendar, like a physical, like a diary where I wrote down everything that I did um, when I worked, but um, I use Google Calendar now and I can see when the breaks are. And more importantly, I can schedule in things that have nothing to do with work um, yes. like <laughs> um, so that I make sure that I don't go oh that was a really good idea oh let me go and do that and then you end up working forever um, and that's that's why I'm, I'm gonna go now and go to orchestra because that's one of the things that I've done <laughs> to block out time that, for something that has nothing to do with work um, so I would say keep a calendar and you can it sounds so basic <laughs> It's really changed things for me. You can color coordinate things so that you have work and work things in one color and non work things in another color. So you can see if you're striking a good balance. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's been really good. Um, and a second thing. Um, yeah, block out regular breaks and not just breaks in the day, but breaks in the year. <laughs> so not just the summer break, not just the uh, you know, break or whenever winter break, but um, it can be whenever is best for you, depending on when the peak times are and the, you know, low times are. Um, but just a break where you can have um, some time for content creation or for a project that you're doing, like if you're doing a podcast or if you're doing your website or writing blogs and you just want to write like 10 blogs or something um, and you want to do it, you give yourself a week where you're not teaching so that you can have enough energy to do that and you can really think about it and make it good quality. I think that's a good idea. Um, and I got that from you in Clubhouse, Annalie. <laughs> that's your idea, not mine. Um, but it's something that has really stayed with me. Um, and then the last piece um, of advice would be to join uh, different groups, like I said before, like really random groups, things that you are interested in and things that you're not interested in, things that you wouldn't even go to. Uh, and actually, I think Clubhouse is a good place for that because you can drop in different people's rooms listen in on conversations, you learn some things. If you don't like it, you just leave. No one's gonna notice or say anything. Um, but you learn so much and you make connections um, with, you know, random people around the world who will send you a message and say, you know, let's connect, let's work together, let's, let's you know, collaborate on something. And I think that's really great. I have a call with someone in the US tomorrow who I met on Clubhouse. I have no idea what we're gonna talk about. <laughs> But she said, you know, let's let's have a chat about how we can add value to each other's lives. And I was like, great. Why not? I thought it was the most um, like um, it's such a such a friendly thing to say <laughs> um, and just really nice. And, and she's not in the language field at all, but it's just it's just a random example. Um, and that's something that happened as a result of me going into different rooms mm -hmm. on Clubhouse. Um, and listening into different conversations taking part um mm. so yeah in a nutshell that's um that's what i would say mm. oh great lovely yeah clubhouse is so much fun isn't it 
it really is <laughs> mm, it really is I have to limit myself a little bit because it does take up a lot of time but it's so powerful in terms mm. of networking it's amazing truly mm. Well, and oh, uh, maybe the final thing before you go, if people want to find out more about you, where, where, where should they go? Um, I shall write it in the chat. Yes. <laughs> you can find me on... Um, put the, let's uh, put some the link. Languages on Instagram. I'm at let's.talklanguages. And my website is letstalklanguages.com. Uh, that's that's basically where I'm most active and that's basically it I'm I'm always somewhere <laughs> on the internet um and we'd be very happy to yeah there we go. connect uh yeah connect have a chat yeah um so yeah thank you so much for uh for your patience <laughs> for listening to me ramble on no um, it's it great it's so great it's so great it's so nice to see your website thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you for all the motivation and you know all the encouragement all the mentoring everything like it's been it's been it's been fun Absolutely. thanks so much and congratulations once again thank I look you forward to having the physical copy uh, of the book Yay, thank you so much, Farah.